Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Alaykum salam uh, Can you please explain more about firasa, spiritual visions during our daily practices? Spiritual visions during the daily practices? Are you supposed to be having spiritual visions during the daily practices <laughs> or you're experiencing spiritual visions? Don't worry about them. Don't look for a spiritual vision. That is one way I think we've described in many talks that if you're seeking those things, uh, shaitan is going to come after you. And if you think that you want to see, where is this, where is that, I want to see, I want to see, then shaitan just come and put finger on your head and begin to cast. You know the, the beauty of technology? Allah didn't want it to be convenient for us but was always every technology is showing immense wisdoms of realities, right? So when we're teaching that y- y- shaykh can cast into your heart a knowledge, an information, make your muraqaba, why? Because now you're, you're getting ready to be casting so you have to pair yourself, pair yourself. That's muraqaba, muraqab, muraqib. Uh huh, it's muraqaba in Farsi. Why? To be vigilant, to, to be where are you? That's casting. Means that make your connection, pair yourself with this device, and as a result, the shaykh's heart will begin to cast onto your heart these teachings and these knowledges. You become very good at it, you don't have to pair anymore because you're locked on. I go into my office, my phone is already locked on. First few times, I have to keep playing with it. And Allah's giving this symbolism. Don't you see the, the analogy? That you have to pair yourself with this individual, as a result they begin to cast into you. But if you don't make that connection and you don't make that understanding, well you're very easily hijacked. So the other day I was playing with my phone and all of a sudden it started to send it up onto that screen. I didn't want that. That was also its wisdom. Yeah, be vigilant on yourself. If you're just sitting like, oh, I want to see this, I want to see that, you want to see it. But that's not the tariqah training. What's going to happen is you're going to get one of these things that just like touch here and begin to cast into your mind illusions. I'm walking here, oh my God, the heavens just opened for me. They brought me down a big juppah, I got a big staff, I'm being crowned and anointed. And it won't stop, it won't stop until the person enters now into imaginary worlds and they're living in a very dangerous spot on their head in an imaginary world. And the tariqah's teachings was annihilate, that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, Ya Rabbi just let me to pair with my shaykh, make my heart to be in his presence, I don't need to see him, I'm not worthy of seeing him, just I need to know with my faith and the eye of my heart, my faith that he's right in front of me. And I don't need to see from my eyeballs and as I know that he's right in front of me that just dress me from your light, I'm nothing, I do my all right, I do my breathing practices, I do all my practices so that that casting and pairing can take place and begin to send. And every time an image comes, even you have a good connection, they train you, negate yourself. That's why every zikr we're saying, an abdul aji sudai fu miskin u zalim. Because you don't want to approach Allah, I achieved, I'm here, so how are you going to get more? So they taught empty your cup. Every practice, every spiritual path teaches empty your cup and we give you more. Thank me and I give you more. So continuously negating, whatever I'm seeing it's not for me Ya Rabbi, just fill me with light and fill me with energy. Let me to know that I'm in their presence and fill me with my energy and I begin to breathe and breathe and breathe. You want to feel the path, not imaginary, just thinking and hallucinating that I'm here, there, there. No, I want to feel the energy, I want to feel that now I'm cooking and I want to feel that I'm lit. When you're lit, you're on fire, your body heats up, your your clothes become wet. If you become strong enough when you're lit, you can light other people and in association with them they can light everyone in the room that heart is, is alive. If the heart is dead they don't feel nothing. So it means the energy that comes from the soul it can be cast out and as a result everybody can feel that energy but we want to take ourselves to that point of training in which I can bring that energy in and bring the energy, bring the energy, keep the energy and begin to become lit.
where we feel the energy, we feel the heat, the hands become heated and the back of the neck becomes heated. So these are the practices that, that teach us realities and stay away from those that which make us to be hallucinating and have a tendency to hallucinate and then it, it can't go, it goes out of control, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah so what is the reason for an itchy face after a conversation on the phone or after watching the news? Is it also the energy? Energies, energies, that's what we just talked about. Itchy face and, and, and something's happening with uh, energies and, and anyone who wants to understand like an energy is you take the square batteries, 9 volt batteries and put your tongue on it. There's a conflict between your energy and the quality of the energy in the battery. As a result, you feel a little bit like a burning on your tongue. So it means the, the quality of light and energy that we begin to vibrate at is a very high angelic resonance. With that energy, anything of a dirtier, lower frequency is going to try to enter into your field and there's going to be a difficulty at that entry point. So very simple. Right? You're, you're resonating at an angelic free frequency, high frequency. Everything running on the ground is low frequency so you begin to feel it itchy and burning on your feet. Because every time they're hitting your field and your force field, as is, as is, well, they're running away because they, they got hurt but you're feeling a continuous zoom, zoom, zoom because your field of energy if you're practicing and building your soul and building the, the energy of the soul and the good practices so that the soul becomes strong and begins to push away these negativities. And the energies that come they don't stay. So imagine the one whom doesn't build their energy and they vibrate at a very low frequency which is the point of these musics that they're mm -hmm. cursing, cursing. We talked the session on the, the secret of, of spelling, spelling means casting spells. The words that you use they're meant to lower your frequency, heavenly words are meant to raise your frequency. Allah brought for us, say, Salaamu Alaikum, peace and blessings be upon you. They teach you to say, Hell O, so that your frequency goes down and you're putting hell on everybody. Well, this is what's going to happen after that point. So everything is about energy. Everything that Prophet brought for us was to magnify the energy, resonate at a much higher frequency. So that you continuously bringing in Divine grace and Divine blessings. And this conflict of energy is where you begin to feel it back, legs, wherever it's coming from. So at, you watch something on an event, the energy is coming through the TV, otherwise what's that TV? It's complete energy. They're moving through all the television lines, electrical lines, everything. Everything you play begins to manifest in the room, the creatures that are involved in those recitations and those castings of spells because they are cursing. So whatever they're saying are curses from Allah. And as soon as you hear cursing, something's coming through that radio into your environment. Either they're going in directly into your ears or coming in and manifesting in the room that's all around you. And if you enter into the rooms of these kids who are listening to this stuff, it's a very horrific energy. It's just is there, a bunch of creatures are just there but they don't see them. So yeah, everything is going to become more and more real until the day when people see it and they want to jump off the bridge because they don't know what type of companionship they brought into their lives. When everyone will see their companion. If their deeds were good, they see a beautific angels around them. If their deeds were bad, they're going to see all these horrific creatures that they brought as companions in their life. And shaitan is clear from all of it. Right? He's going to say, I told them, he says, look these cursed, cursed words, I didn't say these are good words, they're choosing to sing entire songs of cursed words. <coughs> uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, since uh, COVID lots of people complaining about loss of sense of smell, mm. can you please elaborate on this? Yeah, I think one of the aspects of that virus was their, their loss of smell and depending upon what type of treatment they sought and the effect that it has upon the body. So that's, you know, 
whatever it is. And if the treatments were according to what is inspired, then inshallah their, their response should be different. So those, the, anything related to that is very sensitive. So whatever people were being prescribed and there's going to be all sorts of uh, effects of those prescriptions. And whom Allah guards inshaAllah are guarded and whomever faces a difficulty on inshaAllah Allah grant them a shifa and a healing that that difficulty to, to leave them inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi. In regards to wudu and protection of energy, uh, for the feet can we use oil as well as washing? Oil? Oil. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, any time from our own experience that you put any petroleum product or any type of product on an area that needed water, you're going to face difficulty. And because water, my, and Allah describes in Qur'an that my throne, my power is upon my and mim alif and has an immense reality and that the angels are in water. And as soon as you put water onto something, it burns everything because of the angelic reality that's within water. It's angelic fire but because they're angels it's stable and their fire is much more powerful than satanic fire. So when you put water upon yourself and you drink water within your being, immense amount of angelic power enters into the body. And that's what we're in need of, of difficulty. At the same time Prophet opened for us a tayammum that if you don't have access to water you can suppress that fire for momentarily, not permanent. You can suppress it with clean soil. Doesn't mean your backyard that they mock and, and ridicule Islam with these weird things. It meant clean soil so it means sand, right? Prophet was surrounded by clean soil. There was no black fertilizing dirt anywhere, it was soil. You take the soil in a clean container, the sand, and you can make from its dust, the clay and the reality of sand actually will put out the fire of these, of these bad character and bad energies temporarily until you can get towards water. And there are different madhabs, different groups, they have clean sand in a shape, in a form. You can take that like a bar of soap, you use that soil and, and keep it always with yourself when you have to renew your wudu, you don't have access to water. So all of those are, are deep realities because the soil, it can ground fire. So that's why they throw immediately soil on top of fire and will suppress the fire, inshaAllah. <coughs> Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Can negative energy also reach us through the phone or text? Definitely, everything. When you text the, the shaykh and email the shaykh, he can perceive your energy when you were writing it. So everything is a pocket of energy. As soon as you're about to type something, you are putting an intention into what you're writing and the negativity within your fingers or the energy within your fingers or the kindness and muhabbat, it doesn't always have to be negative. That if somebody has a sincere kindness within their heart, kindness within their, their, their being, they're putting that into that effort. As a result that energy is packaged and sent and that's the danger of texting and emailing. So when people are angry in the text, when not only the words are coming but the whole fire behind the text is now moving, is moving and that's all shaitan wants because before You'd have to write a letter and 30 days later on a boat it got to you, but then you're already not angry anymore. <laughs> but in two seconds you can fire off from your, your anger and capsulize your entire anger and shoot it. And that's all the shaitan wants, it's continuous bombardment and contamination of people through their energies and, and uh, anger and their character. But yes, definitely everything, everything. And the phone is the biggest recipient of all of this stuff that comes through on insan. It comes to their face and to their hands. Now the phones are so powerful you feel the heat and the burning within your hand when you hold it. 
because there's so much energy and so much negativity in the device, you actually feel it and burning into the hand and you feel the hand sore after period of use. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Shaykh Nurjan. Walaykum as salaam uh, Being in wudu and praying two rakat nafil wudu, does mm. it help in repelling others' negative energies as my job involves interacting with many? Yeah, that becomes your shield. It's like a battle and that like your armor in complete armor. As soon as you wash, don't talk when you're washing and immediately don't talk to anyone and pray two rakat salatul wudu and ask that Allah to dress you and bless you, become a shield against every type of negativity. No doubt. And the ta'weez upon your, your, yourself as a protection, as a, as a ruqya, as a blessing. They start spreading these articles about uh, amulets and amulet is forbidden. Amulets are completely forbidden the use of these bones and skulls from pagans. And they take the false hadith, they take an, a, a, a misunderstanding and put false applications upon that. The Prophet highly advised the use of ruqya and the use of reciting Qur'an and the recitation of Allah's names and Qur'an as a blessing for us. All of their swords and all of their armour had Islamic writing upon it and that was a ruqya and a protection. Then this word that they keep making, uh, the Wahhabis making with of amulet was in, inappropriately used. What he forbade was the use of the pagans putting bones on themselves, skulls and animal remains and teeth and all these, these things that people were using and they say, these bones of this ward off that. No, no, that was all pagan belief. But using Holy Qur'an means there's no bidah in any type of ibadah and that's all his shaitan's playing. Nobody can say that, oh this, this prayer that you're doing is a bidah. How could prayer ever be an innovation because God wants you to pray all the time. Qur'an can never be an innovation. You use Qur'an as a protection, you use the names of Allah as a protection, you use the different phrases and praisings and salawats as a protection. And all of their swords and we went to top copy, anyone can Google top copy, their helmets were all Qur'an, la hawla wa la quwwata la wa so that the sword doesn't hit them. All of their chest plates and armour was all Qur'an and salawat on Prophet and all their swords were all inscribed. If they were doing this to fight shaitans, what do you think me and you should be doing for every unseen shaitan that's attacking us? You should put a helmet on your head and put a shield on your <laughs> stomach and just to go out. But since you can't, okay, so then you put the taweez with holy names that Allah nazar and blessing be upon it so that you're defended and that you show, I'm a weak servant Ya Rabbi, your dress and your power to be upon me, your nazar be upon me and support me. And Allah is the defender of the weak, not the arrogant and the proud. Why you have a asa? It's to show Allah Ya Rabbi, I'm weak. Say, but you're not weak, you're very strong. Say, no, but for you I'm very weak. So okay, I defend you then. If you show yourself as arrogant to Allah so let's see what He's going to do. But tariqah comes to teach what? Be nothing, be nothing, be humble. If you are humble, Allah is the defender, Allah is the supporter. So all of these have many, many different hikmahs and wisdoms. Why to have these, these symbols and why to have all of these realities is to show our, our humbleness to Allah inshaAllah. Thank you Sayyidi for your teachings about the reality of binary codes. This understanding has opened so much reflection and insight about myself, this world, this test, this game in such a simple way. Thank you. Thank you. Allah bless you. Alhamdulillah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, How do we have patience and let go of expectations while also making dua for what we want? InshaAllah. Expect nothing, be happy with everything. We talked the other night in, in the, the binary talks, I think, was also. Is, is to thank Allah for what you have and not what you keep wanting. That what Allah gave to us, we have to continuously be grateful and thankful for what He gave to us for He could take that away too and, and get out of the habit of asking for more. The tariqah keeps teaching that, why don't you just be thankful for what you have, visualize what you have, thank Allah for what I have. And once we reach that thankfulness, shukr, then what Allah promised in Qur'an, Thank me and I give you more, ilman mazid. Give me more, but you don't have to ask for more. 
but be, be thankful for what Allah has given. And Allah's reply was, then I'll give you more if you thank me. But people are so busy asking, they forgot what they had and ask and thanking. And that becomes where the sin and why things don't open. They, and they get angry. I, I, have, I have people that they get angry. They ask for it, I ask for it. I ask for it, he didn't reply, I'm very upset, he didn't give, oh, oh hold on, that, that's, you, you've deluded yourself by you continuously asking and then becoming uh, upset that he's not answering. But you never stop to think what he has given you and just be thankful, grateful. That's why the, the, the zikr for depression is alhamdulillah and shukranillah, hundred times. Alhamdulillah because everything is praising Allah So we have to praise Allah So hundred times every day, alhamdulillah wa shukranillah. Alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah Shukranillah because He's given me everything. So even the person with one leg says, shukranillah, why? Because he could take the other leg away. So at every state it can be worse. So we don't want it going down, you want it going up. So Allah said in Qur'an that, thank me, I give you more. They didn't say, keep asking me for more. So thank me and I'll give you more, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Is it not recommended to go for walks late at night or to meditate on the deck in the backyard or is this only to be avoided at Maghrib time and after that is okay? Yeah, I think Mawlana Shaykh Abdul Faizid Dagestani advised that prior to Maghrib go indoors. A great attack happens in darkness and great difficulties come out. So the birds that don't have a brain but they have immense hearts. So we take our understanding from Allah's creatures. They're crying at Maghrib time and they're praising at Fajr time. So we can take our birds as shaykhs and say that you should be praying at Fajr time, glorifying Allah and crying at Maghrib time that let me to survive the falaq and the, the difficulty that now going to come towards darkness. As a result, the people whom their energy practices, they actually become attacked at maghrib time. And they feel the attacks are coming because now all the, the, the bad energies are coming out at maghrib. In the day they stay away because like the vampire movies, the sunlight agitates them, aggravates them, too many people are out. Nighttime is when they're out. That's why nighttime nightclubs, nighttime bars, nighttime… These things don't happen in the middle of the day. You know bars in daytime and, and nightclubs in daytime unless somewhere else on, on a boat that you're not supposed to be on. But all nefarious activities thrive in the night. Why? Thrive in the bathroom. Why? Well, because they're there, that's their life, that's their time, that's their environment. So. To save ourselves we go and seek refuge in Allah from the accursed one. And as soon as you do your energy practices and you sit outside and under sun, moonlight and all these things, you may begin to feel very negative energies. You don't feel good energies and many negative things start to all come around. So there is a movie, what's the one we gave the example where everything was pitch black. Vin Diesel and he would light the candle and all, like all these devils were visible. <laughs> That's the reality of this life. So many ifrit in the billions and billions and billions and they're all around and you start to do zikr all in that environment, these energies are all hovering around that, who's that and why are they doing that at that? you attracting attentions that you don't want nor you, do you need. Unless it's a group and they're doing zikr at a specific location for a specific uh, purpose then that's something different. But if it's just for oneself you may begin to feel all sorts of lunations and, and, and very bad energies. InshaAllah be careful. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi <coughs> <coughs> See like that, that's scary. <laughs> Are things getting more difficult out there or for humanity or is it just in my world? <laughs> what do you think it's, it's getting better? It's getting worse. Every day is, is worse. Look at what's happening between Russia and Ukraine and the world is, is collapsing, their financial markets are collapsing and they're on the verge of a world war. What do you think it's getting better for? 
you know, people are suffering beyond imagination and the potential danger, dangers are unimaginable. And then the major collapses will occur and these are all the prophecies that, uh, that uh, all the Prophets of Allah have informed their nations of, of these difficult days and we see them unfolding. We see them unfolding and all their signs are everywhere and uh, we pray that Allah protect us and guide us and give us good character and amongst the good people that survive with good character inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, while meditating I keep thinking of your teachings and mm. so many things become clear but as I finish I don't remember anything. <laughs> Should I open my eyes and write down in between? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, you can have a little pad of paper and a pen and whatever is inspired into your heart then you know you can put some notes but it's a good sign that the videos and the, the teachings that you're learning, they are absorbing. And the prayer carpet and the meditation carpet has a significant power. When you're making that connection and that becomes the reality of, of a fayas and emanation that you have to take the foundation of what you studied, you begin to meditate and they can expand its understanding. Risalat and wahi is something different. I think what this is called is ruqya, no, not called ruqya, ilham, ilham. So wahi means you don't know any subject, you sit meditate and now information coming to you. That's for prophets, that's not for us, it's not something like that. You read a subject, you say, oh I love this subject on energy and meditation, you read it, read it, watch a video of it and you sit and meditate, make your connection, little by little a deeper understanding comes based on your specialty. If you're a scientist you may all of a sudden have many different understandings of meditation energy based on science, based on numbers, based on energies, based on if you're a doctor medicine. So based on who you are and what you're studying Allah will expand it. But not just you don't understand anything, sit down and know why He's coming to your heart, no, doesn't, doesn't work with that. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa uh, I've prayed for some people from the past and I feel them while meditating. Do I just meditate and welcome the people there while connecting to the shaykh? Yeah, pay no attention to them. Just keep your connection to the shaykh. We've asked before that if you start opening yourself up to unseen and you don't see, you could actually be opening up for many unseen. and that that becomes difficult on people. When they try to experiment with this type of, oh I want to go then all of a sudden there's millions of dead people roaming the earth. If they start lining up at your house and in your meditation room it's going to be very horrific for you because you're, you're trying to connect, they all start to come and yell and talk and want a connection with you to the seen world. So these, these become very real. There was that movie with uh, Bruce Willis when the child said, I see dead people. Means once you, you acknowledge you can hear something and you feel and sense something, well you're sending out a signal now that, come to this guy, it looks like he, he can communicate with, they're roaming, these souls are roaming. The ones who've been freed from difficulty, there's no paradise for them to go to, that's not unto judgment. So they just roam the earth watching their relatives and loved ones and that becomes their own punishment because they don't know how to communicate with them. So you don't want to turn your signal on that I'm somebody that can talk to these, uh, talk to the dead and interact with that. So that's not something that anyone wants to open. You just connect with the shaykh and make your connection and don't, don't worry about the rest. And through the connection with the shaykhs that you keep asking, Ya Rabbi please pray for my relatives, bless them, dress them. And if the relatives were very pious and, and saintly souls, then they'll appear to you and you can at that time make your connection to us and communicate with them, inshaAllah. But just random people opening yourself up is, is, is a, a difficult thing to do and you don't want to open that problem, inshaAllah. And they know from experience, right? So they've been in seclusions and all of a sudden thousands of people in the area are coming and trying to communicate. So that's something that they've been trained not to do, don't make that communication, ignore and keep the communication with the shaykhs, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.
إلى الشرف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وعليه وصحبه كرام ولا مشايخنا في طريقة نشبندية العالية وسائر وساداتنا والصدقين على الفاتحة.